Hey guys, how you doing? This is Manga Etc. And I'm here today to bring you the review for Vamp Grosso, Manga Chapter 26. So we start things off where we left off with the last chapter, really. And I personally thought that we was going to get some kind of inkling into how Nikea is going to be able to use Magi again. Magi, sorry. sorry. Magi, sorry. How he's going to be able to use it again. But when I deeped it, it kind of makes sense that we didn't get an answer to that within this... Um, within this chapter we could have but it makes sense that we didn't and the reason why i say that it makes sense that we didn't is simply because we go back to what um what was the name again java i think his name was java but the butler guy who goes back to what he said within the previous chapter or well just previously it might not have been um last chapter um but he said he said that he's going to be in charge of training uh, Nikea physically and the Magi training will be falling on Regina so it makes sense that we don't really get an answer well yeah you can excuse for why we didn't get an answer for that today because Mag I'm not Regina Regina will be handing Nikea's Magi training so any answer to how he's probably going to be, probably going to be able to use Magi again will probably come from her that makes sense so with the Nikea scene within this chapter it's just simply us learning essentially what java is going to be teaching the chaos and it will only probably just be the basics of um of these three um principles i think it were three principles of alto or something like that but that's essentially what java will be teaching at least i'm assuming that what java will be teaching the chaos within the month that he's got and obviously because it's a month very short um span it probably would just be the basics and it might not even be the basics of all three it might just you might just touch on one or two then you know depending on the chaos learning speed if you will but one thing i did notice as well is that when um java was telling us about this thing we are showing three people so i'm assuming that these three people are still alive and i'm assuming that these three people are masters of um the three basics i mean not the three basics the three principles and they specialize in one principle altogether so um so for example for each one you know i think it was body soul and something else but in each panel in each mention of which one it is there's a panel with someone in it that's the master of or they have preference prefer um not preference um is it preference more of an affinity for um that one so i think java will probably start off teaching the basics and some later learn down the line maybe not even in this arc nikea will master each one from each three masters so that's how we start with the chapter and then we move on unexpectedly in my um my opinion i did think we would touch upon the other characters somewhere down the line but we go into rank fang within this chapter so as we know rank fang is killed he's traumatized by that understandable he's a very young lad killed for the first time there will be some trauma understandable so within this chapter we see him go to therapy and now i've got mixed feelings on this therapy session and I'd, honestly i'd love to have the opinion of an actual therapist on was this good therapy or bad therapy like a good session or bad therapy because on the one side of things i looked at it on the therapist basically said to Rangtan, bro, go read some comic books. <laughs> go read some comic books. And to me, in my opinion, uh, that's... Because that, when you look at it from one perspective, that is the therapist telling someone to go and look towards fiction, stuff that is non-fact. The therapist has essentially told Wang Fang to look to fiction, stuff that's not fact, to try and help him. So if you look at it from that perspective, uh, it kind of comes across as bad therapy. But if you look at it from a perspective of you want your clientele, the person that you're dealing with, to essentially get better. So you'd possibly, um, you, you would you would advise them to do things that would comfort them be it it's not in a damaging way for example like if someone saw some um, saw comfort in drinking more you possibly as a therapist wouldn't advise them more to drink more because you know that could lead to other health issues but there's nothing wrong with seeking guidance within comics kind of kind of that's quite kind of what i'm kind of leading to to maybe it wasn't so bad to like advise 
child children who look up to heroes um to kind of seek guidance that way that's why i'm kind of thinking okay maybe it wasn't bad maybe it wasn't that bad but like i said kind of mixed bag on the therapy for me personally so i'd have loved i would love to know like a professional intake on that scene but after that we kind of learn about at least one of the on um, random things of Dr. Mums and she's basically telling us like yo even if it's a good person or a bad person you know killing is tough it, it's not something easy to do that's fact so I think we pretty all know that know that anyway but you know it's nice to know that within the series like you know we are going to see life lessons kind of learned through, throughout and yeah, because basically the back half of the of the chapter was about Ram Fang, and although we've seen him go into therapy, it, it, it's not a quick fix. We probably, well, it's not necessarily mentioned that he's going to have other sessions, but we know that just because he's gone therapy once, we can safely assume he's gone a couple of times since the incident. He's not fixed. He's not fixed, and we see that at the very end of the chapter, uh, he describes what he's been going through when we flip to him, and we actually essentially see it when um at the end of the chapter when you know he sees in the mirror and yeah <laughs> you know what i'm trying to say there when you see him in, look in the mirror and you know he gets traumatized again uh but yeah one thing i do want to mention now I'm not, uh, okay so cool so basically when java is talking to nikaya going back to the beginning of the chapter when java is talking about to nikaya about how um wasted movements you know that just basically screamed ultra instinct but also, not just Ultra Instinct, that is something actually Goku learned very early early in Dragon Ball from Mr. Popo. But it's a common concept in um in most series. Um I can't think of any more at the top of my head, but I know that the whole wasted movement wasted movement thing has come from another series that I've watched in um before. But nice to know that Nikea will be learning this lesson fairly early in his um series career. Uh, but yeah, that's everything I've got to say about this chapter. So overall, like I said, if we on the uh, psychiatrist advice being given, then the care stuff was okay. That is what it is. But really good. I'm um, really digging the whole PTSD vibe of Rang Fang right now. So it would be kind of interesting to how he's going to get out of this brooding mood. I know his brooding mood is more warranted, but it's actually quite, I find it quite ironic because in back in volume one, when Nikaya was um, broody, it was Rang Fang to essentially snap him out of that. So I may be thinking maybe Nikaya might be, at least, he shouldn't be the full solution, but maybe part of the solution of snapping out of it. Maybe um, that's the next phone call Nikhil will make to Rang Fang. Uh, but we'll see. So I feel like that this chapter warrants a three star rating. And like always, guys, I'm asking for your thoughts and opinions. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. But most importantly, take care. Have a nice day.